what's up beautiful people it's sinaruma welcome to the channel today we're going to be checking this very interesting video which has been trending on tiktok and the, and it's a risa tessa story who the f did i marry and yeah i'm excited to check this one out so we're going to be checking the part 26 and 27 of this um story i already created a playlist regarding this so you can find it in the playlist section to follow up with um everything that was shared here but all the same i'm interested to learn more about this is on her story so yeah let's check it out part 26 who the fuck did i marry so i asked legion what's the deal about san diego state he was like what are you talking about and i said um why is there no records of you there <laughs> I just came right out and said it Ooh. without missing a beat this man said, well, I was a private citizen. Mm. What the fuck does that mean? And what he said is that when he started at San Diego State, his father paid money so that... Okay. It's important I say this with a straight face. His, his exactly. father paid money so that his name and social would not be publicized and he would be considered a private student a private citizen um he said that he had a card where he, all he had to do was show the card he does not have to give his name he does not have to give any information because he had that card he said so san diego state would not public would not have any record of him but he was in fact a student there I said, and you claim that you played football. He was like, I did play football. I said, so you're saying that the school did not publish your name anywhere and they were in violation of NCAA rules? And he was like, why are you asking all these questions? And I said, I'm just curious. I'm just, meh, meh, I'm just curious. You're saying that you were a private citizen but yeah, how did you, how were you in compliance with NCAA if you were a private citizen and they did not publish your name on any roster? So that was his excuse. He was like, all I can tell you is that I was a private citizen. My dad paid for it. Okay. So now I know that San Diego State has no record of him. Now I know that his social security number, at least the one that's on my back, my background packet, only shows that he listed in he excuse me only shows that he lived in Georgia, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. Okay, so at this point, the pain in his knee is getting worse. Uh, it's getting to the point you? where when he would come home from work. He would take a shower and immediately get in bed, elevate his knee. He was he was not even eating um, the way that he used to eat. It was getting to the point where at times, um, if you remember when I told you all about the miscarriage, they gave me pain meds because I had taken that pill. But the pain meds I was allergic to, so I couldn't take them. But I still had them. So the pain in his knee was getting to the point where he would take one of those pain meds just to get through the night. He was constantly in agony, constantly kind of tossing and turning, so much so that in May he moved into the guest bedroom because I couldn't deal with the tossing and turning thing. And he just said he was more comfortable there. So what, what at first was a oh, I hit my knee at work, turned into, no, it was an old football injury. This has happened before. Turned into, <laughs> you know, it's painful for me to walk on it. Turned into, it's it's actually hard for me to work on it. Um, but he was, he was still going to work at 6.15 every morning and coming home between 3.30 and 4. So um, it is... Again, I'm just giving you guys the chronological order of how all this happened. So at this point, we're not looking at we're not looking for a house. Um, I still have not seen the two savings account. I'm pretty sure there's no money in those savings accounts. But again, 
he was going to put in an all cash offer with Amber, the real realtor. <laughs> so I really didn't know what to believe, but I, I believed what I saw, which is I saw that that background is not showing where he went to California. <sighs> and also the knee, I don't think that knee pain existed. Well, it's just me processing. I might be wrong, but all of that is just to get away because he's already about to get caught. So he wants to get the soft side or get to a soft side. I just hope that is not how it plays out or it turns out to be, especially regarding the knee. But let's continue. Went to California. So at one point in May, it was close to mid-May, he calls me from work. He calls me from work, calls me while I'm at work, and tells me that he got a phone call from his stepson. The phone call from his stepson, the stepson was crying and was just absolutely distraught. And I'm at work in my office like, what's going on? And he says to me that the stepson informed him that his stepdaughter passed away. That she died from COVID. The stepson found, this is the story. The stepson found her in her apartment because they had not heard from her for a couple of days. And she was unresponsive. He called the ambulance. They pronounced her dead when she got to the hospital. So he was calling to tell me that she had died. Um, and he was also calling to ask me if I would object to him giving his ex-wife $2,000 towards the funeral. As I've stated before, and I, and I still am this way to this day. I don't play about death. So when he told me that she died, I immediately went into the, all right, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, whatever we can do to help, let's help. Because surely nobody would make that up. So he, he again, he was like, are you, are you okay with that? He was like, we're married. And the agreement was that anything over $500 would be a discussion. So 2000 definitely. And I said, yeah, I said, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, he was upset because again, he was close with the kids and my heart went out to his ex-wife. It did because I, I can't even imagine. I cannot even imagine. So. But why would he lie about that? To get a soft side? Is this even real? Yeah, people tell lies all the time. People lie about some stuff. They make up some story. But yo, this is a lot way deeper than we thought. But yeah, let's go on ahead to check part 27. Part 27? Who the fuck did I marry? So here's where we are at and here's what we can establish. Number one, I ran an initial background check on the social security number that was on our marriage license. Nothing came back. I subsequently applied for another job. In that job, I had to fill out a background packet. The background packet asked for my spouse's name, date of birth, and his social security number. The social security number on the background packet for the new job did not match the social security number that he gave me for our marriage license. If you are confused, I believe it's in part 25 or part 26 that I explain that. So we can establish that I then ran a background check on the new social security number that was on my background packet. It came back with um address or excuse me states that it that the social security number apparently had lived in those states were georgia pennsylvania rhode island okay 
I decided, this is now around May 20th, I decided to do another background check. Mm -hmm. um, and I paid to do another background check. This time, I did it with a different company, and not only did it give me the addresses, excuse me, not only did it give me um, the okay. states, it gave me addresses, and it also gave me names of people who were, like, associated with Legion and that address. One of those names was his ex-wife. I've always known, he's, he's always told me the name of the ex-wife. But now I see it when I ran his background. I did a search for her on social media. She was not there. Hmm. So the address that it showed that she was associated with, with him, because remember his story is we got married in San Diego. We lived in San Diego. We divorced in San Diego. Men lie women lie the u.s federal government with your social security number does not so um he's saying he was always in california his social security number never showed that he was in california according to the background check it did show that he had lived in georgia at an address associated with the ex-wife so Try to find the ex-wife, could not find her on social media. So I looked in the metro counties to protect her identity. This, I am going to not divulge a lot on this part. I looked in the metro counties in the, um, the open record courts. So typically, you know, you can look in like superior court or magistrate court or probate court. So I looked in open records for the different counties, metro counties, metro Atlanta counties. Let me be clear, metro Atlanta counties. And I looked under her name and I found where they had filed for divorce in a metro Atlanta county. So when he said that he filed for divorce in San Diego and that he was married in San Diego, I was able to find, no, according to the state of Georgia, you were married here, you were divorced here. So I looked under her name, found a record, found a record for divorce and it did show his name. So now I clearly see on my computer that there is a Metro count, Metro Atlanta County court that has a divorce record in the state of Georgia between him and his ex-wife. So why did he lie about the San Diego and California for the love of God? Just why? Well, he's been lying about so many things, but now this one, Oh, you're doing great let's go on so i did what any rational person would do because this is still kind of covid time um well not really it had nothing to do with covid let me take that back because of the parameters of the court you can only do the open record request in person i did what anybody would do i told my boss i had to go I grabbed my purse, grabbed my keys, and I drove to the court to do the open records request in person. The open records request was for the divorce documents. Go back in the story, in the series, and remember I went over, I did a background on the ex-wife. I told you all exactly what was told to me. He met her in California. He married her in California. He divorced her in California because she cheated on him. He filed for divorce. She tried to get spousal support. It, it, turned, it was going to be a little ugly. He was helping her with the kids. That was the story that was told to me. So went to the court, filled out the paperwork, got the open records request for the divorce decree, for the divorce records. First thing I see, he didn't file, she did. Second thing I see, they didn't make it more than six months. I see the, the date of marriage. I see the date of, the date of uh, dissolution, six months. Second, uh, third thing I see, he was served 
in Metro Atlanta, which means that at the time of the divorce, he was living in Metro Atlanta. Oh, Jesus. Had nothing. California was never mentioned. Fourth thing I see. He filed what is called a pop, pauper affidavit. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to do my best to explain it real quick. Basically, he filed an affidavit with the court saying that he is so poor, he could not afford the fees to pay for a divorce. He couldn't afford a filing fee. He couldn't afford a service fee. That is what a pop, pauper affidavit is for. Oh, Jesus. All of this is in... Um, the divorce documents. She had filed. She said it was irreconcilable differences. She was not requesting any money whatsoever. Um, and both of them had signed a pauper affidavit. He was served in Georgia at his previous employment. According to the divorce documents, he was served at like a grocery store. That is what was listed as his employer. And it had a date of when he was served. So I see all of this in one day. I also see where on the divorce documents, she listed her name, her address, and her phone number. Mm -hmm. So I did what any rational person would do. I wrote down a phone number. There was a 50-50 chance that the number was already disconnected. She could be like me. I'm one of those people. Honey, you can sneeze at a 27-degree angle. I will change my number so quick, you ain't even know what hits you. You can talk to me at 5 o'clock, and at 5.05, my number has been changed. So she could have been like me, and the number is not even active. Or she could be like some people I know who have kept their number since kindergarten. Either way, I wrote the number down. I um, left the court and I immediately went back to work. And the same friend who helped me when I had my miscarriage, I told her, I was like, I got this phone number. This is the ex-wife. She was like, girl, you better call. You better call and, fi and find out from her. Because can't no, I think she said to me, can't nobody tell you what is going on quite like the ex-wife. So, part 28 <laughs> is the phone call that I had with the ex-wife. He's about to go down. What? He lied. California was all a lie. San Diego was all a lie. Him filing for a divorce was all a lie. I said it. That is it. That is it. They would always say that it is their ex. It is always the ex's fault. It is always the ex. So him saying he was poor. So at what point did he now make all of those money that he is claiming to now have? And the marriage didn't last long. How many more women are there that he's done this to? But yeah, this is interesting and I'm excited checking this story. And I can't wait to continue to delve more to the other parts of the story. But yeah, let me know what you think about this. I'm sure tons of people have interesting things to share regarding this. And I really love your honest contribution to this. You can share all the useful information you think might be really helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and all of that stuff. And until next time, see you in the next video.